Space is dropped on another edition of Soccer Down here. I actually got the buttons to push correctly, or at least I set them up correctly. It's probably the more accurate way to describe it. John here, Jarrett there. Jarrett's here for about 45 minutes, and then uh, unless Dylan got the late game last night, hopefully Dylan Butler will be with us at 10 o'clock to discuss everything going on in Major League Soccer for his weekly Wednesday visit. Uh, A couple of programming notes. Bart Keeler is going to be hanging out with us in the Thursday Power Hour to break down the first day of discussions when it comes to the men's national team. So we'll have Bart on tomorrow after the uh, first segment of the show will be a reaction Thursday. So reaction Thursday from 9 to 9.30. Bart will come on to help react from 9.30 until 10. And that'll be the Power Hour talking about national team, talking about Atlanta United, talking about the purple team. We'll get into that as well uh, as we go. So uh, opening kickoff this morning, I I admit I was a bit torn and and trying to figure out how to stack the show this morning. And uh, the beauty of the pre-flight meeting is that Jarrett can set me straight. And for the opening kickoff brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee, kickoffcoffeeco.com, QR code over my right shoulder for those of you watching on Twitch. And I know it's very, very small. I've got to figure out how to get the QR code and post it as BAM is requesting down to the low right part of the screen as we're discussing things. But once again, thanks to everybody who has uh, started enjoying your Kickoff Coffee. And you can follow them at uh, Kickoff Coffee CO on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. Use the code Soccer Down Here fifteen, and you get fifteen percent off of your purchase. They in turn take ten percent of their proceeds, invest in the UK. Very, very cool stuff from our friends at Kickoff Coffee. So, opening kickoff this morning came from a. I mean, because you look at the you look at the graphic, and it's the Salt Talks, and I'm thinking to myself, where was this? It's like Salt, New York. And Salt, New York, is uh, something that, short of any kind of discussions about the Middle East in the 1980s, it was it is a knowledge and networking platform focused on finance, tech, and public policy. And today is the last day of Salt. You can go to salt.org, or unless you want to like fly up there today and go to the Javits Center expansion and catch up on Salt, New York. And one of the guys that was a part of Salt New York yesterday, was Todd Bowley. And uh, Todd Bowley and uh, the folks at Clear Lake, they are the new owners of Chelsea. And so Todd Bowley comes in, and, you know, he's he's talking about stuff. And this is where I bring Jared into the conversation. Todd Bowley, you know, he is not a man who is uh, hurting in the wallet. And so you think that, uh, you know, he, he might have an idea about, you know, how to possibly in, enjoy more revenue in a, into a certain situation. So Bowley at Salt yesterday, here's what Todd Bowley said. He wanted to have, he expressed a, the idea about a Premier League all-star game. And then when Jurgen Klopp was asked about it, he laughed it off as a ridiculous idea. But here's the quotes. Quote, Ultimately, I hope the Premier League takes a little bit of a lesson from American sports. MLB did their all-star game in L.A. this year. We made $200 million from a Monday and a Tuesday, end quote. He said that he suggested a playoff system to determine relegation from the top flight. And, you know, that in addition to the all-star game, remember that uh, Bowley and Clear Lake bought Chelsea for $2.8 billion with a B up front. And they're going to invest another $2 billion in the deal. And he's also discussed about uh, Bully Clear Lake having a multi-club model, and he would love to continue to build out the footprint there. Here's what he also said. He says, quote, I think our goal is to make sure that we can show pathways to young superstars to get on the Chelsea pitch. And after that, you know, getting them real game time. And to me, the way to do that is through another club somewhere in a really competitive league in Europe. Manchester City and Red Bull, remember, they do that right now. CFG has 12 teams across the world in their umbrella. Man City, NYC, Melbourne City, Troy, Girona, Palermo. Red Bull's got Leipzig, Salzburg, and New York Red Bulls. He didn't make any uh, particular suggestions about locations, but Belgium and Portugal could be considered from our friends at World Soccer Talk. That's uh, from our friend Chris Moore at World Soccer Talk. So, uh, Jarrett, a relegation playoff and an all-star game from Todd Bowley at the SALT conference in New York City. What do you think? Uh, I mean, it's it's this thing where 
some things don't like to get Americanized. There's it's it feels very one directional. It's felt like this for a lot of my life. Where like you have a lot of Anglophiles in the United States, right? Who they want to embrace everything that's 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 English. They want to adopt all of it. You know, you get the pro rail discussion. You get the the uh, I feel like I need to ring a gong. I'd get to dig the gong out of uh, yeah, really out of stores to ring the pro rail gong that yes. we had back in the day. Absolutely. Yes. My cat used to be the one to ring it for me. Um, uh, but you've got that. Then you've got, you know, we don't need playoffs. We need to do it just like they do in England. Well, not everything has to be done just like they do in England. Because, like, well, plenty of countries do things in a similar way that we do. You see it in South America. You see it in Mexico. Um, it doesn't have to be just like the English do it all the time. And one of the reasons for that, for me personally, is the fact that you have it, this is kind of one directional like here's the thing english don't really care about the way we do things no like, you can sit there and say hey we should do this because it's going to generate a ton of revenue your tv deal in, in england is already generating a cartoonish amount of revenue so you know that's it's it's not going to really get much consideration from most people they don't really care. They're not, you know, it's not, a, you don't have the, you know, the, the Anglophile thing is not a two directional street in most cases. So I don't know, you know, I mean, yeah, getting laughed off is kind of what I expected from it. Yeah. Um, at the same time, you know, making fun of everything here and, and America kind of being the butt of the joke of stuff. And then saying, well, you know, and then, you know, making light of everything. And then, well, y'all don't really understand the way we do things like you can't have that both ways. That, yes, you know, America is an easy it is it is a layup of a target more often than not about a lot of stuff about the way we do sports. Right. That doesn't always mean, though, that, you know, that you can just hit those layups on us every single day. Like it gets it gets exhausting. Like. If if you if you want to make it the punchline, that's fine. But then if somebody comes up and says, "Hey, what if what if we what if we kind of Americanize some things in England?" Well, you well you got to you you can't do that. This is the way we do things, and we won't want to change things. Well, then quit quit pushing everything. Quit trying to angle file everything here with with the way the game is run. I don't blame him for pushing this sort of conversation. Because you're talking strictly from a financial perspective, yes, it's not as important. They're again, they're making money hand over fist. They don't really care. It's not in their DNA of things. Um, we had this discussion a couple months ago. I'm pretty sure about um, about playoffs and pro, uh, pro rel, but that was just for like the promotion, like expanding out the promotion relegation playoff itself. Yeah, but man, yeah, I'm just kind of like it's it's not going to get picked up you know y'all can kind of laugh at him but yeah he's coming at it from a strictly financial perspective which look i mean that's it is it is kind of an american thing versus ever else where they're looking at the bottom line the reason you do anything with a sports team it's a long-term investment you're looking at the bottom line and it's different in other countries. Like you're, of course you're looking at the bottom line because you have financial fair play and you want to stay above water. You don't want to go under and lose solvency, all that jazz. But I guess the closest thing we have for comparison, John is, you know, in terms of the history and the pageantry is college sports here, but that's not professional, not, not wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Exactly. Um, yes. But it's the closest thing we have in terms of length of, you know, of it being a multi-generational thing going back to your great grandfather who, you know, ran for 45 yards with polio back in my day. Yeah. Like, but that's the closest thing we have to it, but it's, it's not apples to apples by any means of, you know, some of these clubs existing since the 1800s. So it's, I, it, it's not going to get picked up. I can make jokes about it, whatever. Again, the whole Anglophile thing is a one directional street. The English don't really want to, I don't think, I don't think they want to adopt what we do in America. No. Um, just don't be a dick about it. Uh, Jurgen Klopp initially thought that when a reporter brought it up at the press conference yesterday, he thought that the that the question was a joke. And when he was told it was not, Klopp raised the reasons as to why a bully's idea wouldn't work. 
first professional footballers already play too many games, so there's no time in the set to fit it in an all-star. He could have stopped right there. That's the best reason. We already want to kill off some of these dumb cup competitions for the same reason. Mm -hmm. Because you already got too many games, and it's 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 already you know it's already too much wear and tear on the body. And the more and more you pay players with all sports. The more you pay them, the more that they are investments, and you want to protect them. Mm-hmm. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. Second, the concept cheapens the sport by creating a meaningless, inauthentic game. And now I'm going to see if I can do this as as he said, like Klopp said in the press conference. Does he want to bring in the Harlem Globetrotters as well, make them play against a football team? That was the quote from Jurgen Klopp on the second one. Meaningless, inauthentic game. And that kind of goes with what Michael Head was saying in the Twitch pitch. No more all-star games anywhere. I'd prefer no all-star games, period. Hey, Todd, focus on Chelsea. And then the uh, the third point that Klopp makes, Jarrett, ex- uh, explain that no one wants to see an all-star game, let alone a northern versus southern all-star game. Could you imagine, say, Manchester City and Manchester United players on the same team? Could you imagine Liverpool and Everton players on the same team unless the park is your dividing line? It would be a co- the only cool thing about that is it would teach everyone in the United States about the geography of English soccer clubs. Mm-hmm. Like that's pretty much it. Um, it, it. But yeah, it's one of those things. Like yeah, he's coming at it from this financial perspective, this American perspective of what if we did this because it generates a ton of money, mm-hmm. and it is different here because look. There is significance for the All-Star Games in America in different ways. No one gives two dams about the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl is trash. Mm. They have tried to revitalize it. For God's sakes, it's dead on the table. Just put down the paddles and quit trying to vault this thing back. Call it. Please. Call it. Yeah, please just call it. Uh, MLB's All-Star Game and the Home Run Derby, they've tried to overhaul both of those. Thanks again, bud, for all the crap you've I was done for the sport, but story time for John with John when you finish your point. Yeah, it's that one actually has some history to it. The home run derby is beloved by a lot of people. The 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 MLB All Star Game has significance. NBA All Star Game is it's it is what it is. People used to show up for the you know the slam dunk contest that sort of thing. So there is significance there here. But I don't think you would bring it to them. Um, Klopp's just being pretentious about it, which it's kind of his mo. So I don't. I, I, he's just Klopp's being Klopp. It is what yeah. it is, man. So, I know everybody loves Klopp, but he can be a pretentious mm-hmm. dweeb sometimes. God bless yeah. him. Yes. Doesn't make doesn't take away from him being one of the most brilliant coaching minds in the world. Yes. Uh, okay. So su- uh, subset story time with John. I was in Milwaukee for that All-Star game and was covering it in one of my past lives with another one of my alter egos. Well, yeah, Bam Bam and Racket is a wall pass Wednesday, and so we went with the bully chat, and, and this is where we are right now for the opening set, for the opening kickoff. And the, yeah, it's Bowley saying he, you know, England should do an all-star game. And so right. we got into American all-star games. We'll right. get out of it soon. I promise. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about last night, and we'll also do the uh, midweek whip, whip, uh, whip around. Uh, part two coming up in just a little bit. Dylan Butler joining us at 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, I was in Milwaukee for that all-star game and the amount of four letter words, vitriol and stuff thrown onto the field when it was determined that the game was going to be a tie. And I still have my travel bag from that game that they gave, you know, press always gets a gift. And, you know, that was part of the gift is that you got a travel bag, which I thought was really cool. Uh, yeah, I was there. I was there at that moment in history where everybody really, if they didn't like Bud Selig, your hometown fans turned on you, Bud Selig. That's when that was. And that was not a pretty environment, literally. And uh, you know, literally, I'm ducking my head. You know, the the uh, the out of town press, they wouldn't put in the press box. They put us out in the right field bleachers. <laughs> Jesus. And so uh, and I was right there. With Never the- forget Bud tried to get the twins contracted so he could take over more TV market area too. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I was there in the right, in the, the uh, right field, right field bleachers uh, right above the bullpen when all that madness started happening. And so, yeah, I was there at that moment of history and to have your hometown fans turn on you, not that they weren't fans of you really all that much in the first place, 
But yeah, I, I was there for that moment. And that was like, yeah, OK, I think that's the all star game has kind of uh, run its course. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a rather unique environment to be in, to see history turn on a a man and be on something that was a part of the, the schedule for Major League Baseball. So that's uh, uh, story time with John subset B. And it uh, feels like they're still trying to get it back to what yeah. the magic was. I mean, the home run derby, they've they've changed, but that's. It's it's fun, but it's 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 not. It doesn't have the same. I honestly, honest to God, as much as people don't like him, please put Chris Berman back on the home run derby. It was dumb. He's gonna say dumb stuff, but you know, like him calling McGuire in Boston or Sosa in Atlanta was just or Griffey in Coors Field in the I think it was ninety eight. No, yeah. ninety eight was uh, Boston. Well, and then, um, you had, then you had the ninety seven had the home game at Safeco also. Yeah. I mean, but him calling those derbies was great. Go back to that. Um, but yeah, it's to to everybody's point. Uh, yeah, bam, you can get to LAFC in a minute, man. That's uh, we'll get. I, I'm, I'm 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 gonna be checking in on on your content later because I want I want your your fleshed out podcast uh-huh. thoughts about that offense and about uh how Bale fits into that um or doesn't. Uh, yeah, well, it's about uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, man, Manfred, Manfred can go far away. Uh, are scary. I mean, there, there is. You have the FA Cup in England that's similar, but to to John's point, the you know, and to to Klopp's point, England's already got a compressed schedule that mm-hmm. just it's it's crippling the players. It's you already have these injuries because you have what? what is, how many cups are there, John? Eleven billion seven. Yeah, I mean, and that's – and I know lower division has their own cup competitions. Yeah, John, and it, What used to be Johnston's Paint. Now they call it, I think, the EFL Cup. Yeah, you've got – they have theirs. Then they're in the FA. Then you've got Community Shield and all these other competitions. And then you've got European competition if you're eligible for that. And they told two friends and so on and so on and so on. So, yeah. So, okay, so and Michael Head, I know, is anti-All-Star game. That's cool. I had no problem with that. Um, Michael, I would – I would ask you this, and not this isn't a challenge to you, um, because I think our star games can get super saturated too. How would you feel about an e, uh, an EPL skills competition? Because some of the, this is insanely some of the most skilled players in the world. Like, would that be of interest? Um, Where would you house it in the schedule, and how would you do it, and what what's the that's... what's the benefit? Yeah, um, all star games should not determine home field. It doesn't determine for the World Series anymore. Thank God we got past that. That's like the one thing Rob Manford got right. And then he decided, well, that was good. Can't have that. Let's put a ghost. Let's put a runner on second base in the in extra innings. Concept. International softball rules. The fixed time. International break. softball rules. That's oh my brilliant. God. That's what we yeah, that's what we do here on Wall Pass Wednesday. Uh, Bart, for God's man. sakes, baseball, like just get to the point where you're just modeling after T20 cricket. It's done in two hours. God, somebody somebody monetize T20 cricket in the United States so it can challenge baseball because it's a fast, fun sport. Please. Mm-hmm. Somebody help me here. Yeah. Uh, Bart, I do think the their underlying point of his talk is valid. How can the Premier League find ways to generate revenue to pass down the pyramid to make English soccer better for everyone? An all-star game is just the lowest hanging fruit and the most no-duh solution on Bowley's mind. Yeah, and oh... um, I have to. I can't find the. I, so first off, Bam, I apologize. I wasn't able to find the Atlanta, uh, Colorado U.S. Open Cup game. It oh, was on YouTube. I can't yes. find it anymore. Um, I, I am distraught about this Atlanta. because it's one of the greatest games yeah. of all time. Uh, if I am able to find it, I'll send it to you. Um, there was a video on ESPN years ago, by the way, where they took. Uh, I think it was the Upton. I think it was BJ and Justin Upton. And they had them try and hit off of a cricket bowler, and it went about as poorly as you would expect. If I remember, to, I think Jim Callis did it, but if I'm ever able to find it, I'll send that to you as well because it was actually very entertaining watching these professional hitters, call BJ up to what you will about professional hitting, um, watching them try and hit a uh, cricket bowler. It was amazing. Okay, um, there's I'm gonna post a link from the cup.us in the in the Twitch page. And it looks like it has the Junior Burgos Darby Carrillo 
section of it, and then maybe that can help as an offshoot to try to find the uh, the rest of the match in and of itself. So there's the article. From it just the- involves U.S. legend Eric Winalda getting ejected. Yeah, <laughs> like the most tame thing that happened in the game, as yeah. he was like splitting his time between Atlanta and somewhere else while coaching the team. Getting them through the U.S. Open Cup, but not getting like I think they finished middle of the pack or bottom of the pack in the NASL that year. Yeah, because that wasn't the year they they hosted Soccer Bowl. That year was wild because I remember that game. I remember going to that game vividly. Mm-hmm. And yes, uh, well, yeah, I'm I'm a fuddy duddy, Michael, and so apparently Michael Head is just not a fan of a skills competition. He can join. He wants. That's cool. No, and th- and that's cool. I wasn't trying to push one on him. I genuinely wanted Michael's opinion on it. Um, because some people. Some people have that difference of they they won't watch the All Star game, but they'll watch the Derby or they'll watch the Slam Dunk competition. Yeah. Um, I thought the NFL had something fun years ago when they had like Fastest Man, where they would like line up all the kick returners and like Alan Rossum won it one year when he was playing with Atlanta. Like that, I thought that was fun. But some people don't like the game, but they like the concept of a skills competition, and I wanted to know what uh, Michael's opinion on it was. So that's cool. Okay, so uh, yeah, the the other stuff. So the the other stuff, not not just necessarily the All Star game. So that's uh, that is out there for all of that. So uh, yeah, we we went uh, we went down that rabbit hole this morning, and so that's why I figured what was ha- going to happen with all of the the folks that we have here that have their interests either in the U S. in the U K. or both. But uh, yeah, so that was fans the, right. The T twenty uh twenty twenty four T twenty World Cup will be playing the U S. A. and West Indies. Um, ooh, that actually should be a lot of fun. Okay. Well, you know, when we get to the point of getting credentials, make sure that you can figure out how we can apply for those, especially for the domestic. I will, I'll do what I can. Um, it's all about keeping an eye on the T20 for the PR and getting on the meteor list. So, uh, yeah, so Todd Bully's comments were the opening kickoff. Brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee. Kickoffcoffeeco.com. And uh, once again, QR code right here. I know I've got to figure out how to make sure that it uh, – ends up in a, in a larger place down down to my left and your right every single morning when we uh, discuss what's going on with kickoff coffee. So kickoff coffee CO on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, use the code soccer down here, 15, you get 15% off of your purchase. And once again, they take 10% and they roll it over into youth initiatives. So very, very cool stuff from our friends at kickoff coffee, kickoff coffee, CO.com. That was the opening kickoff for this morning. So, uh, West Indies, I am begging you, somehow get Chris Gale to play in at least one of those matches on the T20. Bam found the game, and he's introduce to- introduce the American introduce America to Chris. Uh, Chris Gale's going to be forty four or forty five by that point. Introduce America to Chris Gale, just T20 and the absolute hell out of the ball, and just. Y'all, it's like it, it, it's like if Willie Mo Pena hit for average, <laughs> but also played cricket like. The most aggressive, one of the most aggressive batsmen you can imagine, whose philosophy was, if it's not a six, I have failed. Mm-hmm. If this thing doesn't leave the stadium and hit a car, I have failed. Well, and and I will, I will, I will completely stipulate that I have gone down, and I guess this once again, Wall Pass Wednesday, I will go down the Sachin Tendulkar rabbit hole on YouTube. I go down the Tendulkar rabbit hole on YouTube more often than I probably should admit. To see him just absolutely destroy pitchers, it, it is one of the best. It is one of the best hitting displays that you can consistently see when you go and see a Tendulkar on YouTube and go go through all of his history and all that kind of stuff. Wright Thompson, by the way, did a great article on Sachin Tendulkar. And it was his first exposure to the game itself. And so he get, decides to go and check out the uh, one of the best that ever was. And so that was uh, really cool stuff. So, yeah, I'll go down the cricket rabbit hole. That, that's that's an easy one. Uh, yeah. uh, do we want to talk about last night now? Yes. I think, everybody, I think, I think we've broken everyone sufficiently. <laughs> uh, burn, we uh, – burn, my apologies. Um, <laughs> we've broken everybody. Uh, Bam, we'll, we'll do cricket down here one day. Um, yeah, cr- cricket down here will have to be overnight in Bam's time, so it might end up happening. Yeah, it literally would be overnight in his time zone, but uh, we can pay tribute to Shane Warren, the Burt by level, uh, or Greg Maddox of, uh, of Test Bowlers. Yeah, so how passed much, away this year. Yeah, so how much of the action did you uh, catch last night, by the way? Were you up late for the uh, the delay of delays with Miami and Columbus? 
I was, I gave up. I tried. I woke up at about 5.30 this morning and I saw you and Jason going wild about it because you have, you were so close to having the, the basically the entire night. Yes. If that game ends in a draw, mm-hmm. it, it laid out perfectly for Atlanta, like comedically so, because I still think Atlanta is on the outside looking in of this because they have a tough rest of the way here starting tonight. Yes. But my God, the schedule just keeps falling for them in a way of like, no one's closing the door. The door is staying open just enough. And honestly, it closed a little bit with that result with, with Miami getting a goal from um, Iguain. Yeah. But otherwise, like, man, Shooter, Shooter is going to be oh. beside himself because New England rolled into Houston, took a lead, and then just absolutely hit the self-destruct button. Um Philadelphia looks like they're probably going to win the shield right now because then again, I, I will check with Bam's content when he puts his stuff out about this because man, nice. I don't know what in the hell is going on at LAFC, but it ain't good. Oh, uh, we'll talk to Dylan about that. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, I, I gave up. So here's, and, and so Dylan had Houston and new England. So he, Dylan had Houston and new England last night for his byline. So here's Bruce arena quoting, quoting Bruce after the match. Uh, and I can't quite do a Bruce Arena impression yet, other than just being like pissed. Okay, so can you do a grumpy, disgruntled old man who's stuck in his stuck in his ways and not going to get with the times? Yeah, I don't know what the probability of us qualifying for the playoffs would be. I don't think it's great. We're certainly going to try to win our last three games, but we tried to win tonight. We tried to win in New York. We've come up short. And we've had a very poor home stand as well before this, so there's no excuses. It was all there for us, and we have not performed up to I think our expectations. Loss in Houston four days after the loss to Red Bulls. And they've won three times in their last 15. I think that we all probably need to duck our heads by now because I anticipate Shooter coming, storming in. Three wins, six losses, six draws in their last 15. And Georgie Petrovich has saved four penalties this season. First goalkeeper to do it in a single season since 2017 with Zach Steffen. So uh, played poorly. There's no excuses. Once again, continuing Bruce Arena. You can come up with a million of them, but we were outplayed on the evening, looked like a tired team, but also a team that didn't play together, and we played poorly. 1-1 for 70 minutes is a miracle that we were in the game, to be honest with you, so we got no excuses. We deserve to lose the game, and I got to accept the responsibility for the performance of that team. It wasn't good, end quote. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't good. Like, you... And that's the thing is, man, and you got a PK save out of it. Like, mm-hmm. this is the same thing with, like, Toronto giving up four goals to Atlanta mm-hmm. in that game, which, again, they gave up four goals to Atlanta. Um, Westberg is the reason it wasn't seven. And yes. he saved a penalty. <laughs> yeah. They gave up four goals, and he saved a penalty. Mm-hmm. You gave up three goals to a Houston team that is, you know, pretty much done here. And you saved the penalty. Mm-hmm. And you had the early lead, and you let them storm back. And Houston is playing for pride at this point. Ooh. Good God. Uh-huh. Oh, and, and uh, the other two matches before we get into uh, weekend uh, the midweek whip around part two, hot shots. Uh, Adrian Heath, I know this will surprise you, but uh, Adrian Heath uh, was not a fan of the officiating in the match against LAFC. I don't blame him. Um, and, you know, Bam touches on it. Uh, uh, Durango should have been sent off. Mm-hmm. He was already on a yellow card. He committed a, an offense that any player not on a yellow card would have gotten a yellow card for. And I, I get, it's one of those things where I think the ref's doing everything he can to keep it 11 v. 11. But at the the same time, we saw this earlier this year. I think it was with Philadelphia. We saw that with earlier this year, or or Philadelphia or New England, I think, where somebody uh, was on a yellow card, they picked up a ball, and they threw it out of play or something. And it was a time-wasting thing. And it was one of those where, like, people were upset about it, but Oh, that was um, New England. Yeah. Yeah. Any other player, like, that happens, that's a yellow. It's like standing over the free kick and blocking, you know, someone from taking a free kick. It's it's gonna be a yellow because it's always gonna be a yellow. Mm-hmm. And 
yeah, I mean, I, I understand his frustrations there. Um, I mean, they got beat by a moment of brilliance for Carlos Vela. Like, Bale comes off, Vela floats to the middle. Draw your own and conclusions. just could not – Vela could not have walked up with the ball in his hand and sat it in a, in a pocket of the goal any more beautifully than he did. Ah, so Bam uh, lets us know. Last time LAFC scored a goal with Bale on the field was when he scored our fourth against RSL on August 6th. That being said, his first yellow was a soft yellow. So uh, it was, and that's that's a, that's a whole other issue about you know how why you know unless somebody really earns a yellow early, you start throwing yellow cards early in the game, first 20 minutes, unless someone like. Unless it's like a professional foul, like, oh, man, that guy was going to get a breakaway in the 10th minute, and I could not let him do that, so I took yeah. the yellow card and pulled him down. Yeah. Um, unless it's something like that, you give those early yellows, You the referee's put himself in a weird spot where, okay, now the player can't – now the player has to be super careful, and, oh, well, he committed what should be a yellow card offense, but I already gave him a super soft yellow I shouldn't uh-huh. have earlier, so I'm not going to give him one this time. Like You're overcorrect. He, yeah, the inconsistency will piss off players more than a tight or a loose ref. Timothy Ford was the man in the middle last night. So uh, Adrian Heath says, uh, and I can't do an Adrian Heath yet. I've got, I'm working on an Adrian Heath, but I can't quite get there you, yet. I can do an Adrian Heath. Just take a striker and break them so they don't work right anymore. Uh, do that. Still don't know why Arango's not got a second yellow, but because it's LAFC, they don't seem to have the same rules as everybody else. LAFC... Oh man, I don't like. I got. I don't really care for Adrian Heath. Like, I'm impressed with what he's done this year in the second half of the year. Right. Man, LAFC played without Ryan Hollingshead for half the game last time over the over the weekend. They didn't have Hollingshead because he got he got sent off against Dallas. Mm-hmm. I get you're making a point, and there is this like mindset with it, but. I mean, they did have – they did have – jokingly, and I'm only half-joking here, uh, one of their most dangerous players is like Atlanta having Juan Prata sent off. Like, mm-hmm. that's not the guy you want off the field. Uh, everybody knows it should have been a second yellow. Everybody here in the stadium knows he should. The only person who didn't give it was the referee. <laughs> and then, then after the match, uh, when it was a 1-1 draw, uh, Adrian Heath comes back on with uh, Callum Williams and Kendra D. St. Auburn. I can't really remember other than Arango's first half header when he shouldn't have been on the pitch, by the way. And then the moment of quality from Carlos Vela, I think we've been the better team. So uh, Adrian Heath, uh, yeah, he, he was on fire last night on television on Valley Sports North. So that's that's the thing right there. If Carlos Vela can be that guy that makes them so damn dangerous in the playoffs, because, yeah, you get into a playoff situation, mm-hmm. all you need is somebody to be that difference maker. It's what Red Bulls missed when they missed on Kaku. It's what Philadelphia has missed at times in the past. You need that one guy who can be a difference maker. Mm-hmm. Who is that going to be? Well, for LAFC, we know it can be Vela. And if he can't do it, maybe it's Bale when Vela's not on the field. Maybe if they're not playing on the field at the same time. I don't know. Um, maybe you you swap one for the other and do a like and you know kind of a like for like kind of thing. I know that's not exactly a perfect like for like, but you got you you can. That's why you have those guys who were so talented because you're going to have games where like, hey man, this ain't it, and we need to rescue this with a moment of brilliance. You need to rescue it with you know Tiago Almada hitting hitting some insane. A uh, curling shot from outside the box, like he did against Montreal early in the season at home. Right. You those individual talents are so valuable, and you just need them to sometimes rescue you. That's okay because you can't. You're not. It's it's like pitching. You're not going to have your A plus stuff every time out. You're not going to have your A plus game every time out. So, how do you fight through it, and how do you get those guys in a position where they can rescue something for you? Because sometimes you need them to. All right, uh, let's see. Before you go, we have to do the midweek whip around patent pending trademark coming, hopefully. Uh, Exploria tonight, uh, Orlando in Atlanta United, 6.08 kick, normal television, Valley Sports Southeast, and local TV 
in Central Florida. So that means that your pregame show is at 5.30 with Mike and Jason, and they will take you up to kickoff at 6.08. We will get into that with uh, Dylan Butler, unless, Jarrett, you have something going on in your mind when it comes to Orlando and Atlanta tonight down in Central Florida. Uh, Same thing it's been for the last few games. Hey, it'd be really swell if you don't give up an early goal and put yourself in a hole, especially on the road. Um, Orlando had their had their hangover game against Philadelphia, Oof. which you could not have picked a worse opponent to have your hangover game after winning a <laughs> title than to play Philadelphia, who's just going to try and beat you into the ground. Yes, I could not have could not have asked for a worse game to have to play in that situation. Um, are they still hung over? Are they kind of shaking their heads to get back into it? Because look, Orlando can be. Orlando's playing, they're, they're in the playoff picture. They're playing to have a favorable matchup for the first round and then potentially the second round. Mm-hmm. So this is not a, this is not a, you know, okay, well, it's just, you know, it's, we're just going to play out the string, obviously. Aside, take away the fact that, you know, uh, Airborne DJ talked about yesterday. The biggest thing for Orlando should be they get a chance to try and basically end Atlanta's season. Yeah. Now, whether that's official or not, I don't know. I don't think it is just because everybody else keeps screwing around in the middle of the Eastern Conference. Exactly, yes. But, yeah, man, it's you're, you got a chance to go out there and basically bury Atlanta. They better take advantage of it. I, yep. If they don't have that killer instinct, that's on them. That's mm-hmm. a them problem. Yep. Uh, so that's your early match. Campione's Cup is at 7.30 on – Deuce, NYC, and Atlas. Oh God! Yeah. Man. Oh man, I love this. This has just such big, like, um, this just has such big, like, uh, Liga MX energy to it. We're like, hey, that team that won the league last year. How are they doing this year? Oh, they're bad. Coach oh, is gone. They're bad. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. How often do we see that? We're like. Oh, so and so is in Champions League. They won the league last year. How's it going this year? Oh, they've lost five straight. Yes, that's not good. Mexican League's got plenty of parity for y'all. That is true. Uh, the other three matches after that, it is uh, uh, nine fifteen. It's an interesting time for, to start to uh, Austin FC and RSL, uh, and it is local television, uh, both sides. So. Uh, listed as a 925 kick. So we get a bit of a supersized pregame at Q2 with Austin and RSL. Your uh, juice box is in this one. Austin, a minus 114. RSL is a plus 273. Your draw is a plus 286. Fun fact. Home sides won all three meetings between Austin and RSL, each by a one-goal margin. RSL defeated Austin 2-1 in Sandy back at the riot on May 14th. Andrew Brody scoring the winner in the 88th. Austin FC has suffered consecutive 3-0 defeats following a loss at Seattle on Saturday. Lost by more than one goal just once in their first 28 matches this year. First time in club history they've lost consecutive games by multiple goals. RSL's won three of their last 14. With the scoreless draw against D.C. on Saturday, drawing six, losing five. No team has recorded fewer wins since this run began in late June, tied with four other teams. Two straight 3-0 defeats mean Sebastian Driussi has not contributed to a goal in the last two matches. He's not gone three straight without contributing since he joined the league last August. RSL has failed to score in two straight matches for the second time this season, also from April 17th to 23. RSL hasn't gone three straight matches without a goal in over five years since April and May of 2017. Let's say you, Jared Smith. Um, Uh Uh-huh. Man... This is this could be one where Austin sets themselves right, or you could sit there and go, "Man, I got problems with Austin." I got problems with Austin because of the last few games, and it's not even like because I, I know um, Austin is in this eternal war with uh, the mothership MLS dot com, mm-hmm. um, our Major League Soccer Soccer dot com, uh, MLS Soccer dot com. Yes, yes, uh, the American Dodgeball Association of America. Thank you. I know they got their beef with them about like nobody believes in us. Y'all went to Seattle and got trounced in Seattle. Mm-hmm. If you get trounced against RSL, people are going to have similar thoughts against you. Yeah. It is such a Jekyll and Hyde team 
they're capable of just absolutely lighting you up, but they kind of do that thing that Montreal does sometimes where they like to dig a hole and crawl out of it because, I don't know, maybe they think it's more entertaining. I don't know why they do it. Um, but they do tend to dig themselves quite a hole to climb mm. out of. Yes, that is true. Uh, Give me Austin, but I don't feel good about it. I'll go draw because I don't feel good about either team. I don't like RSL on the road, and I'm not a fan of Austin right now at home. So I'll go draw. Man, yeah, RSL, on, RSL on the road has been – RSL this year has been so weird. Mm. Um, been such a weird team. Um, I can't – anytime I watch them, I can't get out of my head – watching that team that came to Mercedes-Benz to play a motivated Atlanta team and just got absolutely pasted. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have some good games, Yeah, but they just it's like they can't string it together. It's like they're allergic to it. Yes. Uh, two MLS After Darks tonight. First one's with the Prairie Dogs at uh, in Commerce City, Colorado. 10 o'clock Eastern, Colorado hosting your Quakes. Colorado is a minus 200. The Quakes are almost a plus 450 in the composite, courtesy of our friends at Odds Portal. Your draw is a plus 378. Do we need to go further? Uh, give me just give me Colorado. I think Quakes are out of gas. Yeah, I think Quakes, so. The, hey, the Quakes made it fun this year. The After after everything that happened, that whole toxic relationship with Matias Almeida. Almeida. Um, so, yeah, Matias Almeida. And then go into was he in Cyprus or Greece now? Like Greece, I think. Yeah, dude went full tax evasion. Um, <laughs> but you got out of that toxic relationship. You made it fun for a little bit. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what? Go go in, take a shower, take a breather, get in the ice tub, try again next year. Yeah, there you go. And then the last game on the board is at BC Place, ten o'clock listed kick. And it is a 10.08 kick, so it is uh, no super hyper mega pregame show on uh, local television both ways on the TSN West and for Spectrum Sportsnet. Your numbers for Vancouver, slight home dog at a plus 167. Your draws a plus 268, and LAG is a plus 143. Fun fact. Galaxy beat Vancouver 5-2 in Carson October on, on August 13th. First five-goal performance by either team in the history of the rivalry. Galaxy haven't won two matches against Vancouver in a single season since 2014. Whitecaps have lost three straight following a 3-1 loss to Colorado. Their second three-match losing run of the season. The first one was back in April. Three straight losses come after losing just three of their previous 12, winning four and drawing five. Galaxy have won... Multiple penalties in consecutive games, going one for two from the spot against both Sporting Kansas City and Nashville. Insert sentence here. It's not in the notes. L.A. is the third team in the last 25 seasons to win multiple penalties in consecutive games after Portland in 2018, Colorado 2014. Whitecaps have hit just four of their 15 attempts against uh, Colorado on Saturday on target. 26.7%. That's a decent batting average but not a shooting percentage. Vancouver's the least accurate shooting team in MLS this season, managing to hit the target with just 29.5% of their shots on pace to be the lowest in club history, the previous low 32.8% in their expansion 2011 season. Ricky Puig scored a stoppage time penalty to earn the Galaxy a point in Nashville. Puig has contributed to a goal in each of his four MLS starts, two goals, two assists, the second Galaxy player to do so since Carlos Ruiz back in 2002. What say you, Jared Smith? Um... I guess the Galaxy here, man. I think Vancouver is pretty much done, too. Um, we'll see what Vancouver does in the offseason. They've had a couple fun moments, but haven't. again, same thing. They like This this whole season has been teams not stringing things together and having weird times to just completely like sit on a grenade and pull the pin while sitting on it. Um, don't let Chicharito take penalties. How about that? Let Ricky Puig keep exactly. taking them. Exactly. Um, and keep earning them if you can. Keep making things happen in the box in such a way that forces the defense to make plays and forces the, you know, the official to make a call. And that's why you have VAR. Keep, keep being aggressive in the box. I think if you run, if you're able to run at Vancouver and get numbers on them, a Galaxy can have a good time. And uh, that, that'll do it. I think, uh, don't you have, uh, you turn into a pumpkin, right? The real yeah, world. I have actual real world responsibilities to take care of. So, uh, really? yeah, sorry, Tafka. I'm I will not be a part of the roster release. I'm just going to complain about it on Twitter when it comes out. There you, you know, go. That's, that's what we do, man. Yes. So, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll, and yes, we will. Y'all, we will get into um, Philadelphia, Atlanta on the for the weekend because 
hey, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for like the third period of a, of a hockey blowout, kind of like, how do we deal with this game? Well, let's just see how many bodies we can take with us. I was going to say, what, what's the, do we get the, uh, the, uh, the fourth line fight immediately, right at kick? You sit there and it just. Oh, yeah. Like, like we got a, uh, we got a, we got a face off in the neutral zone. We put the fourth line on for both teams. And we know the second that puck hits the ice, the gloves are going to hit about a half second later. Yeah, yeah, those are the fun ones. And then you have uh, uh, Mark Crawford yelling at John Tortorella, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria, that kind of stuff. I'm looking forward to that. If so it, what I'm hearing is we need Doc Emmerich to call the Atlanta United oh, uh, Philadelphia oh, game. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be so cool. Get him just to call it. From Take a his, breather, Jason. Just to, Doc to, Emmerich on it. Well, I mean, actually, here, here's what you do. You've got Jason. You've got Jason and Mike on one screen. You've got oh, Jason. W- no, Mike wouldn't do it because Mike would be too busy watching, like sitting in there and watching Doc Emmerich do it. Because Mike's a Flyers fan. Well, and the, what you what you've got is you've got Kevin and Mo on one screen. You've got uh, Mike and Jason on a second screen, and your third screen experience, your multi screen experience, is to just have Doc Emmerich call it from his house in Michigan. There you so, go. Doc's in his studio with the headset, and he's just calling it. And so that way, uh, you, you want to, you want inside you want inside access from the, the social media team for Atlanta United. You blend all four of those, and the you have the the uh, the uh, the Hispanic crew uh, calling it. So you've got all four calls interwoven into the behind the scenes uh, access segment, which was fantastic, by the way. If you haven't seen that, go catch that. Uh, the behind the scenes inside access with all of the, the goal calls with everybody we, woven through. It was fantastic. So uh, uh, we will see you actually, we'll see you Friday. That's right. Cause Thursdays is when real world Thursdays really- are, yeah, Thursdays are weird. We'll so, figure it out. Yep. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, see. we'll try, I'll try and get in on tomorrow. I'll try and get in on, t- I'll try and swing by tomorrow. So depending on to, to discuss, not even depending, but to discuss the uh, tomfoolery that takes place tonight in Orlando. Yes, and so uh, tomorrow, just so you know, for your own edification, it's a power hour tomorrow, so we'll talk about everything in Major League Soccer for the entire hour. Obviously, the leanings will be with uh, Atlanta and the Purple Team, and uh, we will have our resident uh, Stars and stripes in person coming in. Bart Keeler is going to join us at 9.30 for the second half of the power hour. So power hour tomorrow. Bart's we have... And we also have real world, like get ready for college, uh, get ready for high school football Friday stuff to deal with too. That right too, and that's why we start at eight forty five on Friday morning, so we can get yep. that. And Bart's going to join us at ten o'clock on Friday to mop up anything that we might have missed on Wednesday and Thursday. So we will see you on Friday morning. Sounds good. All right. So Jared Smith, there he is, and there he goes. So uh, Jared, we will see Jared on Friday. Dylan Butler will come up in about seven minutes, and so we've got a hard out with Dylan at ten thirty. And we will go through everything else that we will have missed and catch you up on all the odds and the Champions League and all that kind of stuff and all of your comments. And glad I've been watching the conversation that you guys have been having uh, in the Twitch pitch. That's been great. It's been very, very cool to see that with uh, uh, what you guys are, are talking about this morning about cups and things like that in, in the European theater and trying to uh, help BAM out by getting a win if you're an Atlanta United fan against Philadelphia on the weekend because of how things currently are for Supporters Shield and folks sitting there. And I think it was Emilio who was discussing not having faith in either LAFC or Philadelphia when it came to the postseason winning a title. And, of course, Bam's feelings were hurt. So uh, great that you guys are having the conversation in the Twitch pitch like you always do. And thanks for doing that every morning, uh, regardless of the topics that we have. And I know that I probably sent everything off the rails with the, the opening kickoff this morning when Todd Bowley's comments at the SALT conference in New York City. So uh, let's see. Since it's uh, that time to read a promo, let's try to grab the music. And so this is where we scan down to make sure that uh, we find the music and we hit it at the appropriate length and speed so it doesn't overpower the read. There we go. So time for the read. QR code over my left shoulder for those of you watching on Twitch. It's from our friends at Eliminize Service, Rotor Free Clean Fresh Air, one place you need to go, and it's Eliminize. Deodorizing in closed spaces like houses, apartments, and condos, they've created a customized solution that eliminizes all organic odors, including those like pet cigarettes and food. Realtors and property managers use Eliminize Service to eliminize bad odors to help them sell or rent their homes that much faster. The turnkey process makes it easy to work with realtors and property managers. Kind of the environment. We like that these days. Very green way 
of going about things, getting rid of odors without any kind of toxic residue whatsoever. Different than Febreze or our favorite masking agents that we have either under the sink or up in the cupboard, because when you reach under the sink or up in the cupboard and you spray the masking agent in the air, that's why they call it a masking agent. You're just masking the odor, not attacking the problem all the way down to the molecule like our friends at Lemonize do with their proven scientific formula. Pricing very, very easy, one of two ways. Either buy cubic feet or parts per million to come up with a price that's affordable for you. Offering results in 24 hours or less if you have any questions, frequently asked or otherwise. One place you need to go, it's their website, Eliminize.com. But do us a favor here at SDH. After the .com goes slash Atlanta, sorry, I'll grab my pen slash Atlanta so they know what part of the world you are addressing them from where they can help you attack your issues. So your full homework assignment with the QR code over my left shoulder for those of you watching on Twitch, E-L-I-M-I-N-I-Z-E dot com slash Atlanta, Eliminize dot com slash Atlanta for odor-free, clean, fresh air. Eliminize service proud sponsors of everything SDH on a wall pass Wednesday if I can get the slow fade here. And this is the thing. It's like you sit there and you think you've got the slow fade down and then all of a sudden it just kind of disappears on you. So, all right, there's six. There's four. There's two. Well, actually, I think I got it this time. Okay, well, good for me. I actually figured out the slow fade. So uh, gradually getting things squared away with the uh, audio board. And, uh, of course, I say that and I probably jinxed myself. Dylan Butler coming up in a couple of minutes to discuss anything and everything on his mind. He had the New England-Houston game last night, so uh, we'll catch up with him and see if he can do a, a good Bruce Arena impression. It's, just, it's almost Belichickian. It's, it, that was the first thing that popped into my head trying to do a Bruce Arena impression. Uh, Bam going back to the top of the order. No cup set today. Down 5-2 into injury time and have the U14 keeper on your bench time to put him in. So final is going to be Sydney United and MacArthur. Uh Will, uh, thanks for uh, subscribing back in, by the way. Barbecue competition completely screwed up your work schedule combined with the Braves on the West Coast. Will did not place in the, the cooking. Brisket came out fantastic as per usual, but that was just for fun. The pork, which was the competition meat, was a cluster. Rain got into my temperature probe jacks, so I accidentally pulled two of the butts off over 100 degrees early and lost two hours, so they had to be served late and at the lowest safe temperature to eat, which is not the most delicious temperature. Man, I am sorry about that, Will, because I know how much of an artiste you are when it comes to... You and Mike Conti both are artistes when it comes to uh, the grill and the grilling and the grillage. So uh, my, my sincerest apologies that the brisket, that the damned rain and the temperature probe jacks. Unbelievable. So, um, and uh, so let's see, with you and Mike, with the, with the grilling and the cooking, with Domer and the making of the sauce, which, by the way, we still have here at the house and we are still plowing through. And Domer's sauces, by the way, are absolutely amazing. And we'll recommend them, you know, hand over heart, recommending Domer's sauces for everything when it comes to uh, the cooked meats. Uh, we have a very talented group here of uh, folks. Fantastic, amazing talents when it comes to the, the culinary arts. So once again, thanks to, to all of you guys for sharing recipes and all that kind of stuff. And then let's see, going back into the early discussions uh, with uh, Todd Bowley in the opening kickoff. Uh, <laughs> sorry, did, Will, did your connection finally figure it out? Uh, Bam, we know that you've got a lot to talk about with LAFC. And uh, uh, make sure that you, Bam, post your post the link to your uh your LAFC podcast so folks can get smart from your perspective on LAFC post that in the Twitch pitch when you have half a half a minute uh let's see going through all of the early discussions on uh the all-star game and Todd Bowley yeah can't imagine uh, any other idea dumber than an EPL all-star game yeah just the notion of Manchester players playing together Liverpool and Everton playing together uh my biggest thing once again where would you put it in the schedule and I know that Bully is looking at things. Bully is not a poor man, and he didn't he didn't become a, he didn't become a, a multi gazillionaire by not thinking uh, outside the box with ideas. And so yeah, you just, sometimes you spitball, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it rains. And so no, he's he's just thinking of ideas and thinking about revenue, and uh, completely understand uh, the uh, the negativity attached to it, especially Jurgen Klopp, especially when it comes to the schedule. So no, I get it. There are too many all-star games anyway. 
first and foremost. But I get where Todd Bowley's coming from, trying to create extra, extra revenue. Hey, it's 10 o'clock. So that means that someone has popped it. Let's see if I can get this done correctly here. Let me see if I can do this. Here we go. Dylan Butler. There he is. All right. So let me let me properly promote. So uh, you had last night you had the New England Houston game because I saw the, I saw the byline. First and foremost, my apologies for, for well, getting that. Yeah. But uh, and obviously looking at uh, the comments from uh, a, a perpetually cheerful Bruce Arena. Yes. Uh, he, he was not pleased with the the input and the output of his of his side in a game that if they needed to keep pace, they needed to win. Had a lead, didn't keep pace, and then you just got to hear Bruce grumble. I think after the match, yeah. And it wasn't even. It was funny, John, because it wasn't a long grumble. But uh, I feel like with Bruce Arena, it's uh, it's it's the. Um, you know, you get the most out of out of the two minutes and thirty seconds of his press conference more than probably any other coach in the league. I, I would I would say so. Um, you know, he probably answered three four questions, and when you look at his responses, is there really a reason to an- ask any more questions? <laughs> I think he kind of covered it all. Um, put uh, uh, his whole team on blast. Put Brandon. <laughs> Put Brandon by on blast, then apologize, not really apologize, but said, listen, if it's fair to Brandon, I probably could have made eight or nine subs at halftime. <laughs> um, really, the only one who who escaped unscathed was uh, Georgie Petrovic, who yes. he said was outstanding. And he was. Uh, everybody else was not. And um, the, the challenging part you know, to kind of uh, take people into sort of how the sausage is made. The challenging part then for me was what was the best quote for a headline, right? Was it, was it Carlos Heel saying we're not a competitive team? Was it uh, Carlos Heel saying we don't deserve to be in the playoffs? Was it Bruce Arena saying we deserve to lose? <laughs> like there were so many to choose from. Uh, from uh, from that defeat, that certainly you know when you look at the table and look at the numbers, uh, appears to have buried the Revs a year after, you know, setting uh, the league record for points and winning the Shield. Is Bruce done? Do you think does he hang it up after this season? Because it just seems that he's perpetually frustrated, especially after the fall of uh, fall. I mean in the sense of the table, I don't mean necessarily tripping well, down. And, and, well, the team did right. Literally <laughs> from, yeah. from best uh, to one of the worst. Um, I think it's a good question. I think it's, it's his decision to make, right. I, he's not going to be forced out. Um, uh, I, I don't think at least I'd be surprised if that was the case. Um, I think he enjoys it in new England in in the Boston area. Um uh, you know, clearly the crafts have, you know, they've built a pretty good training complex for him. He's excited about that. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. Um, I think it's his decision to make. Um, what I will say is that it appears certainly like a lot of the moves that he made um, to try to fill some holes in his roster just didn't pan out, right? Like the Petrovich was amazing right like tremendous job there getting a goalkeeper who somehow equals the one that you had who was the best in the league Mm -hmm. Um, if not maybe even arguably arguably better um but i think every other move really didn't pan out for them right sebastian legette didn't work out obviously omar gonzalez and josie Altor didn't work out and then even the moves from overseas like there's been a ton of injuries for those guys so like it's hard to even say that any of those guys uh panned out in the right way when speaking about moves as i transition to lafc when uh we looked at that match last night i don't know how much of it you got to catch maybe the greatest hits considering you were locked into an incredibly insightful match (laughs) with with houston and new england 
But uh, Adrian Heath seemed to put uh, Timothy Ford on blast not once but twice. Yeah. Uh, a lot of folks think that Adrian Heath was correct in, in his assessment on the, the second yellow, even if the first one was a soft yellow and that, that second one's a yellow. You can't do like a, an oops, my bad, make good, and I won't you know, make a, a harsher yellow, a non-call. Uh, I guess two two points. I, I or I guess that probably ends up going more than two when it comes to Minnesota and and LAFC. Uh, Adrian Heath was right on, and I wonder if he's going to be getting a, a FedEx envelope it, like they used to do in the National Football League. You get a FedEx envelope in your locker with uh, with the notification from the league. Does Adrian Heath get a FedEx envelope in his locker or an email? Uh, good question. My first thought was to say no. Um, and, and you asked me the same question a few weeks back on um, Pat Noonan. And as far as I know, Pat Noonan didn't get. Haven't heard anything. You're right. Right. So it, it and that was a case where I said I didn't think that he would because I think it was clear that he was right. You know, so um, I wonder if this is going to follow a similar path, although uh Heath has had a history, obviously, of criticizing officials. So I think there could be a little bit of a slap on the wrist. Um, Don't you do that. But, but yeah, listen, it's, uh, you know, to say that there's a different set of rules for LAFC than others, which kind of then harkens back to Ernst Tanner <laughs> as well, alluding to something similar. Um, that was certainly interesting. Um, and actually, I think the, the, the most fun comment I think that he made, which has totally gone under the radar, was after the match, he was asked about um, the pitch. And then he he grumbled, as an Adrian Heath would, ah, you know, the, the players today, they wear slippers. They don't wear real boots. Don't get me started on that. So like, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool, like for an old, you know, um, uh, you know, guy who played uh, in in the English league when the English league, you know, back had, in my day. Yeah, yeah. Had had uh, what's his face? The guy from Liverpool who, who was the actor, right? Going around running at people. Um, uh, oh, you know who I'm talking about? I, I do, and I know Jones, that. right? Uh, uh, maybe someone on the Twitch pitch can help. Yes, us out. Twitch pitch, help us out. Liverpool, Liverpudlian actors. Right? Jones, I think is the last name. But uh, yeah, I you know. It, it, it seems like that the empirical evidence you can bring in your black and your black and gold helicopters if you want, but it was just it seems like there's another instance of protecting the shiny objects, you know, when it comes to to LAFC. Second question for you, having to do with LAFC, when it comes to Bale and Vela together, yeah, it seems like that Bale and Vela don't need to be together because uh, Gareth Bale and, and, you know, like I said, we've got Bam who's watching us from Australia, as he always does every morning. Vinny so Jones. Vinny Jones. Thank you. Uh, when it comes to Bale and Vela, this is not a marriage that is, is turning out well right now. No, it's like, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's kind of like the analogy I can make is like, you know, I love – uh tacos right who, nothing who wrong with that yeah I was gonna does, say. right yeah. yeah um but i also love pizza yes uh they don't really go together though right like no I no can, I can enjoy a taco and i can enjoy pizza i don't put tacos and pizza oh no together and and it almost kind of feels like that's a little bit of what we have here it's like two really good players who in their own right are very very good but they just don't seem to mesh i don't know if it's a matter of their playing styles or not enough time together, um, maybe more one than than the other. Um, but you're right. Like, and, and I think this is a little bit of the problem now. I think for Trundolo, I, you know, is it a good problem to have? I, I don't know. I mean, it's good to have very good players, right? But you you want to get your best on the pitch in the biggest times of the season. Um, and if you know two of your highest paid paid players in those four positions aren't on the same page like that's going to be hard right like when it's a playoff game you, you're not going to tell me that gareth bale's not going to start the match right mm -hmm. like, so therein therein lies the problem i think for lafc 
So then if taco and pizza are up front, what would you discuss at the back? Uh, what kind of what kind of uh, mix are we talking about here with Chiellini, who is still you know, still acclimating, which you really don't need to have at this point of the season. But you know, if Chiellini is another another meal on the menu that is uh, uh, is turning into an acquired taste for LAFC right now. Yeah, so what would he be like? Would he be like almost like that octopus or like the like what's a, what's an Italian meal that 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 you know maybe some don't love? Um, hey, listen, I think he was he's been brought here for the playoffs, for those big moments, for his experience in those moments. So I think they're going to ride or die with him, to be honest. Okay. In, in in the back, I don't. Um, I think. I think the bigger question is the first one that we addressed uh, is, is just what do you, what do you do with that attacking line? Um, and, and seemingly the answer just is like, unless you really get like crazy with it, you've got to start those guys, right? It's got to be those guys and, and, and Arango, um, Yeah. And you just roll the dice and you just hope that on the day um, the individual talent shines through but um yeah i think i think the reason you brought a chiellini in was one to mentor your younger center backs and for what um he can bring to the room as just the guy who's played in the biggest games but because he's played in the biggest games that the postseason should in theory fit him well so emilio uh, on the twitch pitch is suggesting perhaps that chiellini is calamari yeah, but I, but is it like the see? Like I feel like everyone loves fried calamari. I mean, I mean, I don't know. No, not I, I am not. I am not a calamari person really? at all. No, I, I am pasta. Give me pasta and some nice, you know, nice chicken. You know, maybe you know. I, I am so basic and and absolutely the most vanilla lover of Italian food. It's like, but I look, feel like you can get into fried calamari only because it's fried. Like who loves uh, it? And anything fried is good. I can't, I can't, I no. Just the, but I, I just, but I, I wonder with Amelia, I wonder if it's more like the grilled calamari, because that's a little bit more of a tougher thing to get into. Mm, I can't. <laughs> I just, can't. I just the, the whole idea of calamari being calamari, I, just, I can't do, I can't do octopus. I can't do squid. Just, just that premise of like, oh, great. There's an octopus staring at me. There's some squid there. I, I can't, I can't go there. No chance. Honestly, it is it is pasta. It is chicken. Give me the good carb load. Maybe with some, <laughs> some tremendous meat. I mean, literally, we we uh, there's a a restaurant uh, here in town or the next next city over. Literally, we have them deliver all the time, and the the portions are like astronomical. The bowls mm. get are about this big. So no, I can't I can't do fancy. But I know that uh, Emilio says grilled works or in sauce. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's a good call. And uh, the soccer, soccer for good OG, uh, ha, she says, I have zero sense of adventure when it comes to food. I will stipulate to that. I will absolutely stipulate to <laughs> I have no sense of adventure when it comes to food. But this is what happens when Dylan Butler visits us on a wall pass Wednesday. We go completely off the rails. I mean, I had a conch fritter for the first time the other day. Whoa, whoa, whoa what? Yeah. yeah, a conch fritter. Whoa. I, we, we did um, on, a, on, a, on one of our high school broadcasts, we did a, a food review of DJ's Clam Shack. It's a. Uh, originated in um key west they have a couple on the island so um we did it we did a few different things we had like uh the lobster roll okay. um a few other things but yeah conch fritter was the first uh first time i had one of those okay uh bam by the way down in australia says if you want something great to eat have some kangaroo i don't know if he's serious <laughs> or not yeah that's a little um past my i'm, I'm more adventurous than you john for sure but that's uh -huh. A little bit too too adventurous for me. Yeah, uh, Bam mentioned uh, since he has his uh, LAFC podcast uh, down under. He says Bale is the sub for when Vela comes off. Bowanga or Opoku starts and Chicho starts. That's what he thinks up top. I, I agree. I, I don't know. That's a tough sell for me in the playoffs. Well, I, I mean, say for them at least, right? Like I I hear you, but I don't know if you spend that kind of money and brought in a guy like that to have him come off the bench. Right. Uh. Yeah, we got off the rails this morning, uh, and uh, there is a scarf off your left shoulder, left shoulder. And, and your your left shoulder, not our left shoulder, but your physical left shoulder. There is a scarf, the blue one, that is next to the red one, 
And is. there it is. And we discussed the comments uh, of uh, the new chairman wanting an all-star game and uh, trying to find other ways to generate revenue in the Premier League. And the uh, manager for the red scarf team next to your blue scarf basically laughed at him after after being initially told, no, it was not a joke that that uh, was brought up at the SALT conference by Todd Bowley about the idea of having possibly an all-star game and relegation playoffs in the Premier League over at the Javits Center. I thought that that was interesting. You know, Todd Bowley is not a poor man, and, and you know you don't you don't make money without investments and thinking outside the box. And uh, Todd Bowley certainly did that at the Javits Center yesterday. And listen, this is what you're going to get with um, more and more American investors in the uh, English Premier League. You're going to get more and more American sports type of ideas, right? Yeah. Like, um. And that's one of them. And uh, look, you know, I'm I'm not the we, we spoke about this. Before. I'm not the biggest fan of of all star games in general. And, yeah. and, and I think MLS has found a way to, to make it work um, or they did at least now going forward is the big question with with the expanded leagues cup. But um, I thought when you put the best of one league against the best of another rival league, um, I think that really, that works. And and I think you get competitive matches. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't see. I, I, I hadn't heard what they proposed it to look like. North versus South is what Bowley yeah. was looking at. No, it's not going to work. Because you'd have – Manchester City and Manchester United teammates, unless the park is the dividing line, you would have Liverpool and Everton. You'd have Merseyside teammates. All yeah. of these, all of these derbies, would you have them on the same sides? But that's what they, that's what he, the initial thought was: North versus South. But then, what's the? How would that be competitive? Yeah. Like, listen. I would be more of a fan of a skills competition of, of some sort because that's like super fun to watch, right? Like to see a, I don't know, a Cristiano, a Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Like do some skills or, or other guys, you know, um, um, accurate shot, hardest shot, like those yep. things that we saw yep. in the skills competition here. I, I would be more a fan of that than the actual game because I don't, you know, why would a guy m- making a hundred million dollars yeah. a year or whatever it is like, why is he going to bust his ass at an all-star? Yeah. What, what's, yeah, no. the, I mean, Klopp mentioned the, the schedule's already too clogged. Yes, it is. That's true too. And there's way too many games, right? Like the, a Liverpool is probably playing what, like 112 games in a season, mm-hmm. <laughs> something to that effect these days. Yeah. And, and so, you know, you, you've got, you've got that notion and then uh, what else did Klopp say? Klopp mentioned, and let me go to the quotes here uh, really quickly. Uh, let's see. How did he lay it out? He said, concept cheapens the sport by creating a meaningless, inauthentic game. Uh, mentioning in the press conference, uh, asking if Bowley wants to bring in the Harlem Globetrotters and make them play against a football team. <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, so, and his third point was that no one wants to see an all-star game, let alone north versus south. So yeah, no, that, there's no, um, yeah, and, and you can't even bring the MLS concept in, because, like, what would you have, like, England against Germany? Like, uh, like yeah. who cares? No, right? like, I don't care. I, I legitimately do not care. And, and I mentioned in the first hour that I was at Miller Park covering that all-star game that sent the all-star game in major league baseball careening into the void with the, with the draw, with the draw, I mentioned draw tie. That's another thing with all of the stuff that I've been doing in, in soccer these days, it's like, I'm having conversations with football coaches and I'm asking them to, you know, to find, you know, what do you think about your next match? What do you think about your next fixture? I'm using those <laughs> with, with high school football coaches now. So that shows you how much soccer I've got in my brain these days. But, uh, yeah, so all-star games to me mean absolutely nothing. They mean less than nothing to me. But, yeah, Todd Bowley, uh, I don't think that's going to be the last time he's going to volunteer an idea. But, uh, 
I think 50% of the teams in the Premier League have some kind of American investment now. Yeah, right. So you're seeing that kind of you're seeing these kinds of ideas coming through when it comes to uh, the Premier League. Uh, okay, so you've got 10 minutes. You've got a hard out at 10:30 because you've got to actually like talk to people and do and do interviews and things. Yeah, two two football games myself this weekend. So and then in my uh, in my catching up with coaches actually is at 11 o'clock, and so that's why when you go, I'll go for another 15 minutes and preview the day and and then get into my second Zoom with a coach I haven't talked to yet this year. So, yeah, I'm right there with you. Those high school Zoom meetings were during football season, right here during uh, Wall Pass Wednesday. Uh, when you look at uh, – let's, let's go ahead and look at, uh, at the future. This weekend, we've got Hudson River. We've got – We're right over the biggest match of the day, Campionas Cup. That's true. Well, okay. So Campione's Cup, Atlas, Atlas and NYC. I, you know, Atlas and NYC, we, Jarrett was mentioning this in hour number one with the, the idea that, you know, Campione's Cup, it's a great idea. Fantastic idea. Love to see Liga MX teams going up against teams in Major League Soccer. But then, you know, you schedule it the year before and then you look at where things are and you're looking at NYC and NYC is, uh, is playing cliffhanger uh, on the Price is Right, and they're not hanging on. It's like somebody just overbid, and you're about to see the guy go over the cliff. And Atlas has lost five in a row, and I think they've gotten rid of their coach. This was great when you came away up with it on paper, but right now the teams are not showing up the way that they thought. Well, um, one thing that is true, I guess, for both tonight is uh, this is the – opportunity for the reset button right um okay. certainly for for nycfc like i i um again in my in my usage of analogies um you know they're stuck on the on the major deegan there on the side of the road and, and their engine's turning <laughs> over they need triple a yes they, they need to get that jump for their, for their engine so they can get going um and and perhaps that's what this does you know you were you were just alluding to it before that, uh, you know, the Derby's coming up on, on the weekends at Yankee Stadium. Um, they're obviously trending uh, the wrong way right now at the worst time of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps this match actually comes at, at a great time, right? Like a chance um, yeah, for whatever you might say about it. You know, there is an actual trophy on the line. Um, so a chance to sort of ramp it up playoff style now um and, and obviously the the roll of the dice of that is that you've got to win then right like so if you now win this match um you've get that confidence going again um and perhaps it's the it's the perfect sort of ramp into into the derby on uh on the weekend all right and so uh i'll getting... be there as well in the bronx tonight that'll be fun so uh oh and uh, by the way folks uh in the twitch pitch uh, let's see. Once again, Soccer for Good OG said that uh, you were on Sirius XMFC on her drive down to Central Florida. One of the best MLS commentators, always even handed and honest. That's me? Yeah, it's you. That's you. Oh, okay. Cool. Thanks. So, there you go. So, yeah, Soccer for Good OG is part of soccer. One of the originals were Soccer in the Streets here uh, in, uh, in uh, the Atlanta area. In the very Georgia. kind. I appreciate that. So, yes, very, very cool to get that kind of compliment. So, you've got the Derby. Yeah. You've, got, you've got Atlanta and Philly. You've got uh, Grumbling Bruce Arena in Montreal, Orlando City in Toronto. Uh, Montreal, by the way, last night locked up a home bid. That home, they did. Home game. So that was pretty big for them. No doubt. Uh, with the five matches. And like I said, I'm glad that you didn't get stuck with Miami and crew. Yeah, I was too. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, we said we said on our uh, on our um, on our uh, Slack channel that I, I was I was mercifully subbed out to save my legs for today with Campionas coming up as well. So uh, save me for, for, for that one. We need, we need fresh legs for Campionas, but I will. Um, here's a question for you and or the folks at the Twitch pitch. Yeah. Um, the bell in Montreal, right? Oh, love it. You ring it after, after, after the goals. It seems very arbitrary though. The number of rings, is it true? It doesn't seem to have anything to do with the number of goals. Um, I didn't. I didn't time it. I don't know if it's like a minute of a bell or a yeah. minute and a half. I don't know. It just seems That's, like until the guy gets tired and yes. then he just stops. Yes, that to me, it's almost like the 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 Texas Tech 
uh, ringing of the bell on the sidelines as well. It's like there's no set number of rings attached to it. There's no set part of tolling when it comes to the, the bell at Stad Saputo. I love it as a part of their fabric, Yes, but I have no clue. Yeah, so if anyone who is a fan of CF Montreal, soon to be Impact, probably, hopefully, maybe, uh, can answer the tolling parameters for the Bell at Stad Saputo. We will put that out there. And if anybody on the Twitch pitch knows, fantastic. I'd love to know. Or is it just random until dude gets lactic acid to the point when he gets tired? That's the uh, that's the biggest that's the biggest question. That's a hell of a question this morning. Are you a poutine guy, by the way? No, I am a Swiss I chalet. I am a Swiss chalet guy, but I'm not a poutine guy. <laughs> I mean, I fell in love with Swiss chalet at Pearson International Airport. So. Uh, I mean, so I, I, you know, for, for me, just give me my fries with maybe some ketchup, but other than that, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, maybe if, if there was something exotic, can you get like barbecue on top of it as a part of like, you know, barbecue on top of fries? Does that count as like, a, Montreal? yeah, as a poutine-ish kind of a thing? Probably not. Barbecue sauce or something like that, like Heinz 57. Uh, let's see other matches on the weekend. We've got, uh, Austin and Nashville. Yeah. Now, that one is uh, relatively Hard large, good. relatively large at Q2 with uh, with that one. Uh, you look at Austin. Do you have as much concern about them as you do about LAFC? Yeah, I think so. Right. Because uh, LAFC, they, they're similar in that LAFC seemingly had the shield on lock. Uh, mm -hmm. The same was true of the second spot in the West. Right. That seemed to be Austin. And, and they were even making a little bit of that push. When LAFC started to struggle a little bit before Austin did. And when Austin had that big win over LAFC, you started thinking, well, maybe they can make that shield run. Obviously, they didn't. And now they've got Dallas breathing down their neck. So uh, definitely a, a, a concern there for Austin as well. All right. Uh, I know you got three minutes, so we're going to play CFL. Three-minute warning. Uh, Atlanta, Atlanta and Orlando tonight. What do you think? Uh, is that in Orlando? Yes, it is in Orlando. It is so a two and a half hour delay, no doubt. <laughs> what is with? Look, I get it. I get the the weather in South Florida is what it is, especially in the summer. But I feel like this year Oof. there's been more I know. delays than games that have gone on as scheduled in mm -hmm. Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 incredible. Mm -hmm. I, I'm right there with you. I mean, Orlando last time out. You want to talk hangover from yeah. Lamar at U.S. Open Cup? And they were on Church Street for a while, that one. And, uh, you know, maybe they went to Applebee's, too. Uh, <laughs> half, price, half price apps. No doubt. And so you wonder how much of the hangover is there for Orlando. Atlanta last time out uh, put up a four spot on Toronto. Yes, Toronto was missing Mavinga, Osorio, and Insigne. And they were really missing Mavinga, I would say. Yeah. So, missing Insigne and Osorio, and the the uh, the defense was shown for what it has been pretty much all season long. But Atlanta United put up four last time. They're going to take that offense down to Orlando City to take on. Yeah, huge, yeah, huge for Atlanta, no doubt. Yep. So, we'll see where they are mathematically. So, uh, we will catch up with you next week because you got to bail and talk to high school coaches. Yeah, buddy. All right. Uh, real quick, what what do you do? What are you writing on at OSDB and MLS Soccer before you go? Uh, well, Campionas tonight, obviously, right? So yep. we'll have that on MLSsoccer.com. And then I'll have um, – um, I just did a piece on OSDB Sports about um, the historic CBA okay. for the women's and men's national teams. Um, and then this week coming up, I'm, I'm going to break down um, the announcement, which should, which should pop, I think, in about 30 minutes, right, for Berhalter. Yep. Uh, I'm going to break down maybe who has the most to gain from the September window. Uh, again, the starting nine is is intriguing. Maybe who will partner with the Walker Zimmerman in the back. Um, a lot of intriguing questions, I think, coming up for the national team. So, so I'll dive into a few of those on, on Monday. All right. Get out of here. We'll see you next week. All right, buddy. All right. Dylan Butler, yeah. MLSsoccer.com and OSDB Sports. Dylan's got to go talk to high school coaches. Uh, Soccer for Good OG says there was no rain in Central Florida yesterday, so count on a deluge this evening. You're not wrong. And, and Emilio, if we didn't have a roof, how many games would be delayed? Answer D, all the above. So trust me. Uh, yeah, that's just, woo. Uh, Tofkin, no, we will not be here by 11 o'clock because I have to leave because we have 
uh, stuff that we've got to talk about with the high school stuff. We have uh, to high school football down here for a quick segment on Wall Pass Wednesday. It is Lowndes and East Coweta. Uh, that one is going to be our first visit to Garland Shoemake Stadium on the campus of East Coweta High School down in uh, Sonoy. And it'll be good to have Lowndes heading north and catching up with uh, the Vikes and the Indians on Friday night. So the Zoom calls have already started with our coaches. I've got to join in on the second one at the top of the hour. But uh, not to disappoint, Bart Keeler will be hanging out with us in back-to-back days. Bart Keeler is going to join us tomorrow as a part of the Power Hour. And he'll join us at 930 and uh, we'll discuss Atlanta and Orlando and everything else that happened in Major League Soccer in the first half hour tomorrow morning. And for the second half hour of the Power Hour, Bart Keeler will join us at 9.30 to discuss the roster announcement and anything else on his mind when it comes to U.S. soccer. He will then again join us at 10 o'clock Friday to go over things once again from 30,000 feet. And I think the uniform, uh, the uh, the uni, the kit gets released as well. So Bart Keeler is going to do the, uh, the, daily, uh, the weekly double with us here at soccer down here. Bart will join us once again, 9.30 tomorrow morning for the Thursday Power Hour. Once again, we'll talk Atlanta and Orlando. And then Bart will join us at 9.30 to discuss the yeses and the noes of the men's national team. That will come up uh, at 9.30 in the Thursday Power Hour here at SDH. And he'll rejoin us on the very busy Friday show where we start, remember, at 8.45. 8.45 start on Friday mornings because we want to get through the weekend whip around patent pending trademark coming before 9.30. And then that's when we're joined with our friends at Beyond Goals Mentoring. I think it's Greg Garza's turn. So Greg Garza will join us at 9.30 on Friday morning. Then Bart will join us at 10 o'clock after Beyond Goals to discuss anything else on his mind and get us moving into the weekend as well. And Jarrett could possibly rejoin us at 10 o'clock. So very, very busy two days here at SDH. Once again, thanks to everybody for hanging out with us, uh, as you always do. Thanks for putting up with me and my lack of technological uh, advancement, learning, <laughs> learning things as we go. And it's great to hang out with all of you guys on a daily basis here uh, at SDH. Thanks for listening to all the programming that we have on a weekly basis. And, uh, you know, we will continue to crank all that stuff out. Remember Thursdays with Nico that will come up late Thursday afternoon. We'll do that one live on the network here on Twitch, and then it will be turned over into the app. So you can listen to it later as well. And then once again, we'll turn uh, all of the other segments individually as well. So if you want to listen to the show in its entirety, you can do that. You want to listen to the segments individually, you can do that too. So, you know, thanks for hanging out with us all season long, all year long when it comes to everything, because uh, just because Major League Soccer isn't going, uh, you know, in November, we got a World Cup thing to talk about. There's always stuff to talk about in the off season. So we'll always be here for you. And this is our sixth season of doing this. So once again, thanks for being a part of everything here at SDH as we always have. Uh, Bam obviously wants a result against Philadelphia. That will be an interesting part of it as well. Uh, Emilio talking about uh, LAFC. Uh, National coverage is so LAFC friendly while being overly critical of Atlanta United in all areas all the time. It's almost like rooting against them to shut up the unbalanced coverage, if that makes any sense. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, everything, you know, everything with LAFC's wine and roses, and apparently everything involving Atlanta United has to be uh, destroyed. So, uh, it's been, it's been awful for Atlanta United and everything is amazing with what you're seeing at LAFC. Once again, you're dealing with a larger media market. You're dealing with shiny toys and you're a rights holder. So I completely understand it. Definitely. Uh, it's disappointing to see. And that's a bit of an understatement from my perspective, Emilio. And I know that I'm not alone in that, but that's just, that's how they operate. And that's how they choose to operate. And we can always choose to either uh, mute and listen to radio or go to other providers. That's just that's the beauty of the that's the beauty of the button. We can sit there and change it. The beauty of the remote. We can sit there and go to places where we want to listen and we want to watch and we want to have uh, honest conversation. And you want to have honest assessments as well. So uh, you know, yeah, that is the the way of the world so far when it comes to LAFC. Uh, Michael and Bam having a conversation about uh, the result on the weekend. Uh, Rack says taking your son to the Delta club for his birthday this weekend, really hoping for a match that doesn't leave all the guys angry, but sometimes, you know, Rack, it will be very, very interesting to see how things are with Philadelphia. I mean, Philadelphia, if, uh, you know, right now the way the standings are, Philadelphia is chasing supporter shield. They're two points ahead of LA. Philadelphia only has three matches to go. 
So right now, every point matters, every match matters. How do they approach this one going into the international break? And that was another thing that I wanted to get into this morning before we go, is uh, the uh, mes- message from Cedilia uh, uh, Marley uh, about uh, Andre Blake being left off the Jamaican uh, national squad for the round of uh, activities in September because apparently he's been overly critical about the organization, left off the squad for this uh, most recent round of, of action. And uh, a lot of folks are, a lot of folks are really mad about it and uh, be interesting to see what the fallout is after this window. Uh, if it continues with uh, Andre Blake and the Jamaican football Federation. So I saw that this morning and thought that that was uh, very, very interesting going forward. Emilio was uh, down on the chances against Toronto. However, if we can win tonight, we can win Saturday. There you go. That's absolutely the way I'm thinking. Um, all right, so Bam, as the public service announcement, says he's part of the LA, uh, the Heart of LAFC podcast. Go live at 12.30 a.m. on Fridays, Atlanta time. Uh, so is that Thursday night going into Friday morning or is that Friday morning going into Saturday? So let me know. It's uh, sorry, 12. I know I'm just catching this and it's 1230 in the morning. I'm sorry. So uh, let me know. But thank you for providing the link to that so we can keep an eye on you uh, in the Australian Cup. Bam mentioned it earlier. Oakley Cannons legit subbed in the U14 keepers. They've got a lot of keepers out injured, though. Why not sub him in an injury time? Uh, yeah, I mean, it just it got to that point and it was a great run. And thanks for keeping us updated on that stuff. Thursday night going into Friday. Thank you. Okay, that's that's uh, that's good to know. Uh, also, let's see. There was there's the food discussion. And yeah, I look. I will be the first person to sit here and say I have no imagination when it comes to food. I, I legitimately don't. And that's just you know I. I sense of adventure and me and food are three things that do not really go together. So that's just kind of how, that's kind of how it's always been. I just I I, I know and yeah and then uh, the soccer for good OG. How did you phrase it? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm cool with the chicken staring at me. Yeah, uh, but it, it's cut up, so it's not really staring at me. At least I don't think it is. Uh, all right, so let's get into uh, the uh, action of the day. What you can watch, where you can watch it, all your previews and all that kind of stuff. We'll also talk about what happened in Champions League yesterday leading into everything. Uh, The fans give, uh, from Paul Kennedy over at Soccer America Daily, fans give the World Cup 2022 dress rehearsal in Qatar poor reviews. Uh, Joshua Robinson uh, had, uh, when they were looking at the dress rehearsal, uh, apparently he went back for uh, the... Uh, dress rehearsals back in 2019 uh club world cup was supposed to be that way experimental fan zone set up in the desert where fans could drink beer uh looking forward they had another one in late 2021 uh the doha news the english language daily reported on the issues that fans face plan was for fans who drove to park in lots in the vicinity of the stadium and take shuttle buses but some never arrived forcing fans to walk more than 45 minutes in 95 degree heat to reach the stadium one issue fans faced was long lines before and after the game for mandatory Etheraz checks. Fans traveling to the World Cup should already know about COVID-19 contract, contact tracing app that to Qatar will require everyone to have to gain access to public facilities like Stadia and the Metro, uh, their, the Metro, uh, Metro system. Uh, it was the beginning of the problem. Not enough volunteers. And many of those that were working, according to the Doha News, were clueless. That's the Doha News' word. A uh, newspaper quoted from a Snapchat story billed as a prominent Qatari influencer. No water, no Pepsi, no food. Everyone struggling to find anything to eat or drink. Showing video of fans by the hundreds rushing to get out of the stadium, not even halfway through the match. Transportation to and from the eight stadia by car or public transportation will be one of the many issues fans will have to face. Reuters reports caterers and security and medical personnel had their own problems. One supplier anonymously told Reuters, even some ambulances were driving around trying to figure out where they were supposed to be positioned, given the wrong directions over and over. And the parking passes we had were for lots that did not exist. To reduce traffic, schools will be shut down. Workers are being advised to work from home. Sections of Doha closed to cars. Reaction from fans at the Loose Sales Super Cup contrasted with the upbeat tone of the orientation event held for 16,000 volunteers, volunteers held earlier in the day with pep talks from folks like David Beckham. Uh, as for the Qatari World Cup organizing committee, stated that the dress rehearsal did what it was supposed to do. Quote, 
As a test event, the Super Cup was designed to identify any operational issues and learn lessons may be applied to help Qatar deliver a seamless experience for all at the FIFA World Cup 2022. Every team involved in the event organization gained invaluable experience they will carry into this year's tournament. And speaking of David Beckham, uh, the stadium plan has a victory with final zoning approval. That's come out from the Miami Herald in the overnight uh, from Joey Fleckis. Uh, plan to build a stadium, major hurdle winning the final zoning vote that will allow construction to begin in the near future. The Beckham and the Moss brothers received commission votes four to one to pave the way for applying for permits and breaking ground on Freedom Park. Uh, Manolo Reyes was the only no. Process will begin with an extensive environmental cleanup of contaminated land under the golf course that is the site of the project, expected to transform the swath of uh, tra- uh, taxpayer-owned parkland in the city. No mention of safety concerns recently raised by the county's aviation department, which runs Miami International Airport next to the site of the complex. Unclear if the airport issues will be another obstacle going forward forward so uh we will keep an eye on that so news back and forth uh okay bam retweeted from 2011 from rio ferdinand we'll get to that in just a second um also uh, oh that's right we're going to do viewing because we've got to see what folks can watch today so today on television and remember the uh, uh roster announcement for the national teams coming up at the top of the hour Looking at soccer on TV once again here on Wednesday. You've got uh, Champions League. That's going to continue. That uh, got nine matches there. Uh, Campione's Cup is on ESPN2 at 7.30. So uh, Dylan Butler will be there. Liga MX on FS2 at 10. Juarez and Pachuca. That was also going to be simulcast on Fox Deportes. Uruguayan Primera is at 7 o'clock on Gold TV. Nacional and Boston River. You can get that at Fanatis fntz.co slash soccer down here you can get gold tv and a lot of other things to uh keep an eye on everything going on in south america jason got me hooked on fanatis and if you are hooked on the the south american game you can get that uh as well two to na has uh two games in champions league Uh, ac milan dinamo zagreb at 12 45 real madrid rb leipzig at three campiones cup at 7 20 and club america and santos at 10 uh, Unimas has the uh, Champions League matches at 12.45 and 3. Univision, simulcasting, Campeones Cup and Liga MX. You've got uh, college action on the women's side on the BTN Plus 5. ESPN Plus, very, very busy. They already showed Oakley Cannons and MacArthur this morning. England uh, Championship action at 2.55. Reading and Sunderland, all of the games in Major League Soccer tonight. USL Championship, Birmingham and Pittsburgh is at 8. Union Omaha, Richmond Kickers is at 8. And Papillon, Nebraska from League One. A lot of action in college men and women. Paramount Plus is where you can get all of your uh, activity in Champions League. The doubleheader at 1245 and the the seven other matches that are going to be at 3. Primera in Argentina on Paramount Plus. Aldo Civi Newell's at 1, Cologne San Lorenzo 3.30, River Plate Bonfield at 6, Lanus Boca Juniors is at 8.30, doubleheader in the NWSL, or two matches in the NWSL, North Carolina Angel City at 7, Chicago and Kansas City at 8, Vicks and Vicks Plus have Champions League as well. So that's your viewing habits for uh, the day. Now let's take a look at the juice boxes and how they lay out here as we get ready for the uh, a very, very busy viewing day. We've got a lot of matches going on right now in Eastern Europe and uh, North Africa, Youth League and Cups and things like that. Uh, Youth League in Europe continues at 11. You've got U20 action going on. Russian Cup is going on at 11 o'clock, which gets us into the uh, the noon hour. Seri Chi is going on, so Nikolifi will be happy about that. Once again, you're still looking at Eastern Europe in the early afternoon hour time. Uh, Premier Division in Uruguay starts with a noon kick. Uh, Champions League, your juice boxes, AC Milan, a big favorite at 1245 at a minus 294 against Dinamo Zagreb, who comes in at a plus 919. Shakhtar Donetsk and Celtic, and this is going to be played in Poland at the home of Legia Warsaw. They came up with an agreement, so all of the Shakhtar matches will be played there. Uh, Celtic is a plus 129, Shakhtar is a plus 206, and your draw is a plus 262. Uh, Aldecivian Newell's, since we mentioned that one, that's going to be televised. Juice boxes, 
they're throwing a blanket over it. Everybody was in the margin of error. Aldecivian Newell's on the win, and your draws a plus 215. Uh, once again, you've got German Regional Cups going on in the early afternoon alongside the kickoffs with uh, Champions League, the championship. You've got four matches at 245. Luton Coventry, John Nason will be keeping an eye on that one. Millwall QPR, Norwich and Bristol. And Norwich announced today that uh, they're going to have a new minority owner that's uh, going to be helping out uh, Miss Delia. And Rotherham and Blackpool, that one's also at 245. FA Trophy is at 245. Lower Division's at 245. Reading and Sunderland, West Brom and Birmingham, they are at three. Champions League, your juice box is there. Napoli, a minus 109 at Rangers, who are a plus 308 at home. Real Madrid, a minus 164 as RB Leipzig comes to town at a plus 419. Manchester City, big favorite against Dortmund. Manchester City, a minus 455. Dortmund, north of plus 1160 to win. FC Copenhagen is a home dog to Sevilla at a plus 263. Sevilla is at a plus 118. Your draw is a plus 231. Maccabee Haifa, uh, north of plus 1100. They are hosting PSG at minus 455. Chelsea and Salzburg. Chelsea's a minus 294. That'll be Graham Potter's uh, introduction to uh, Major League European football. Salzburg's basically a plus 800. Your draw is a plus 460. Juve and Benfica. Juve at home is a plus 131. Benfica is a plus 225. Your draw is a plus 235. Also uh, on the board, more action in Argentina starting at 330. Cologne Santa Fe and San Lorenzo. Colo Colo is active on the road in the Primera in Chile. That one is at 4 o'clock. Uh, scanning down, we're getting into South and Central America. Mentioned the juice box numbers for all of the matches going on in Major League Soccer. You've got MLS Next Pro. You've got NISA. Courage at home at 7 o'clock, a minus 137 as Angel City visits at a plus 286. Nacional is a minus 244 since we mentioned that game being on television uh, at against Boston River. Uh, Boston River is almost a plus 700. Cerro Porteño is in action tonight in Paraguay with a hosting. Uh, Universidad Católico and Huachipato is at 730 in the Primera uh, in Chile. NYCFC is actually favored in Campeones Cup at a minus 111 going up against Atlas at a plus 254. Your draw is a plus 260. Uh, more MLS Next Pro, more NWSL on the women's side. Chicago Red Stars are a plus 104 at home hosting Kansas City Current. Birmingham at home going up against the Pittsburgh Riverhounds in USL Championship or a minus 110. Union Omaha hosting Richmond Kickers in League One or a minus 159 at 8 o'clock. Lanus and Boca Juniors. Boca Juniors are a plus one and a quarter on the road at Lanus. Uh, let's see. You've got Takaki Calf League. Tauro from Panama hosting our friends from Motagua. Motagua is slight, a uh, slight road favorite at a plus 160. Tauro is a plus 173. Your draw is almost a plus 200. And your two matchups in Liga MX. They are going on. At uh, 10.05, Club America is minus 192, hosting Santos Laguna, who's a plus 478. Your draw is a plus 330. Juarez hosting Pachuca. Juarez, a big home dog at a plus 270. Pachuca is at a plus 102. And your draw is a plus 231. Also on the board, uh, looking at any other activity, uh, the question had come up about the postponing of the Premier League games last weekend and when those games can be reoriented into the schedule. Uh, uh, Arsenal, Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester United, Leeds, Brighton, and Palace all have two Premier League matches to catch up with after they saw postponements enforced. So no available midweek slot between now and the start of the World Cup. Premier League and Championship matches will pause on Sunday, November 13, which allows six midweeks before then. All of them are already full. Four rounds of European fixtures, one full set of Premier League matches in the third round of the Carabao Cup. What about 2023? Only three vacant midweeks in the five months before the season ends Sunday, May 28th. None of those are available until April at the earliest. April 3-4, May 2-3, and 3, May 23-24. But those dates are reserved for clubs involved in the latter stages of Carabao Cup and FA Cup who have to move their league matches from the usual weekend schedules. So, now what? You know, midweeks are set aside for FA Cup third round replays, January 17, 18, February 7, 8. Will the FA Cup replays be scrapped is the question. 
And the FA is understood still to be planning to reintroduce replays in the third and fourth round later this year. Replays scrapped for the last two seasons in the aftermath of the COVID pandemic, but the reintroduction leaves the calendar with a lot of congestion. So what are they going to do? That's going to be the, the larger question now for the Premier League with a lot of games and not a lot of schedule. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that going forward. Uh, let's see. Uh, Arsenal versus Man City was postponed, uh, rescheduled. Arsenal's game against PSV has been rescheduled for Thursday, October 20, which means Arsenal and Man City has now been postponed. And so you've got things trickling down there again. So we'll keep an eye on that going forward. Uh, Huddersfield has sacked their manager after just nine games in the, in the championship. And uh, checking the papers before we go, avoiding the three and the four letter paper overseas. Daily Star Liverpool attempted, uh, yeah, really, cancel the Gummy Bear Cup. I'd be right there with you. Just to have the, the Premier League team sit there and go, nah, we don't want it. I'm right there with you, Michael Head. Uh, Liverpool attempted a late 86.5 million pound swoop for Federico Valverde before the transfer window slammed shut. Uh, Wrexham co-owners Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, I've yet to see this show, but I know I need to. And uh, they both have had uh, polyps removed from their colons after Reynolds lost the bet that McElhenney would be able to learn any Welsh during their time at the National League side. Loser having to broadcast the live colonoscopy, which McElhenney also grudgingly underwent. And and, uh, public service, I've had three. I've had three colonoscopies. And because of family history, my dad passed away uh, from colon cancer. And so I started having my colonoscopies in my 40s, and so I've had three of them, and I had polyps removed second time around. So if you are of age and uh, or have the family history, I cannot and will not recommend any more highly get checked. Get checked, get checked, get checked. And I will continue to say that as long as I have a microphone to do it. Get checked. And I'm glad that Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney got checked. And I'm glad that they had polyps. I'm glad that polyps were, I'm not glad polyps were found, but I'm glad that they were found and removed. So uh, good, good on them for, for having colonoscopies. I've had three. No, they're not fun, but uh, they are part and parcel to my family history. So, uh, you know, it's just part of the deal. You accept it as part of what it is. Uh, avoiding the four-letter paper, Daily Mirror, B- Bayern Munich supporters have taken aim at UEFA for their late decision to alter the arrangements of Champions League and Europa League fixtures following the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Atletico Madrid president uh, Enrico Cerezo rejected claims a compromise is being worked on with Barcelona over an end to the situation with Anton Griezmann. Could our uh, uh, national nightmare with Antoine Griezmann be over? Don't know. Yet to start a game this year, a year uh, because of a clause in their loan deal signed in 2021. Uh, Guardian Brighton will step up their efforts to recruit Graham Potter's replacement as a head coach in the coming days after assessing a short list of potential candidates that includes Norwegian Shetel Knutsen and the former Shakhtar Donetsk manager Roberto De Zerbi. And uh, Preston North End have issued a lifetime stadium band of supporter for a derogatory tweet about the royal family. Good. Good. The Times. Senior figures at women's Super League clubs want football authorities to consider showing live games during the 3 p.m. Saturday blackout window with the idea of potentially being part of Karen Carney's review into women's football. Uh, Daily Express, Arsenal director Adu is stepping up his efforts to avoid losing three of his first team stars, tying him down to new and improved contracts as a matter of priority. Sampdoria chair Marco Lana claims Harry Winks is determined to make a success of his loan spell in Serie A to prove Tottenham boss Antonio Conte wrong. And in the Scottish papers, uh, hip striker Mikola Kukurevich edging closer to a debut after finally arriving in Scotland. Gus McPherson set to return to top flight football as the new head of football operations at St. Johnston. Daily Telegraph, uh, you've got uh, some news in other sports. So that is your look at the papers. That is your look at uh, the juice boxes. And that will hopefully get uh, everybody looking at uh, all the stuff. Uh, Joe Bost, have a great hashtag OFYO day. That is the plan. And, uh, uh, okay, uncle, I will watch. Yeah, I just have to have the time. We've got to have the time to watch. So, but uh, no, I'm glad that they, glad that they did something for their health. Uh, like I said, not glad that they had things found, but I'm glad that they were found in time and had them removed. And, uh, yep, uh, right there with you, Emilio. So, 
once again, recapping tonight. Uh, early early start in Orlando probably means it's going to be weather delays because they decided to start earlier than normal. 5.30 start with the pregame with Mike and Jason on a 92.9 The Game, unless they shifted it to uh, another channel. Uh, keep an eye out on your Twitters for Atlanta United for 92.9 The Game to see if they shift it to another channel. Keep an eye out for the weather delays as well. 6.08 kick. Atlanta and the purple team going at it. Uh, Atlanta once again chasing after playoff spot with a win. They're within a another win of the final playoff spot. Almost everything went Atlanta United's way last night in uh, making sure that everyone didn't advance out of reach when it comes to these uh, final one, two, three, four matches that we have with uh, Atlanta United. Orlando, Philly, the Revs and NYC on decision day. So four matches to go. Atlanta United chasing after that final playoff spot in the East. 5.30 pregame, Mike and Jason, 6.08 kick weather. Weather depending. So we'll keep an eye on that. And you've got the other matches that we've talked about with Dylan and with Jarrett going on in Major League Soccer tonight. We'll keep an eye on that. Remember tomorrow, it's the Thursday power hour on at 9.05, off at 10 or 10.05. So it's maybe the power 55 minutes. Uh, We'll talk about Atlanta, Orlando. We'll talk about everything on your mind. And Bart Keeler joins us at 930 with the announcement coming up in a couple of minutes about uh, the roster for the men's national team. We'll get into that in great detail. We'll have uh, we'll have uh, uh, we will have him back, Bart Keeler, on Friday. So your rundown Thursday power hour, nine to ten. And uh, Bart will join us at nine thirty. Friday, 8.45 start. 8.45 start now, so we can get in the weekend whip around patent pending trademark coming by 9.30 when our friends at Beyond Goals join us. 10 o'clock, Bart will rejoin us from 30,000 feet to take a look at uh, the kit reveal and the team and everything else that we forgot uh, heading into the weekend. And maybe Jared will uh, jump back in after 10 o'clock as well, and we can have some fun. So that is the rundown of everything here. Once again, everybody, thanks for hanging out with us for a full show on a Wednesday. Thanks to Dylan Butler uh, as well for his uh, normal Wednesday visit, Thursday visit with Nico Moreno. We'll come live on the network late in the afternoon on your Thursday, and then we'll turn all of these segments around here on the network. So for everybody here at SDH, for Jason, for Jarrett, for Nick, I'm just John. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy your games. Mucha plata, y'all. And since it is the end of the show, that means that I get to do this. 